And we do welcome you again tonight to our Bible study. We are turning to Acts uh, on chapter 18 tonight. Acts chapter 18. Maybe before we do that, can we bow please for a moment in prayer. Our gracious, loving Father, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you again for this opportunity of opening the word of God and trusting you, dear Father, that by your spirit, you will take your word and apply it to our hearts. Encourage us and challenge us and bless us, we pray, that we might be instructed and that we might be encouraged in the work of God. So loving Father, come to us now, we pray, and help me and each one who listen, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. As we've been looking at these chapters in Acts, we see Paul in his second missionary journey. Uh, some doors had uh, uh, been closed to him, uh, but God had redirected him, uh, and he had a vision of a man from Macedonia saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul was convinced that this was God's leading, he departed uh, to Macedonia and came to Philippi. Uh, there was no synagogue. It, take, it took 10 Jewish men uh, to form a synagogue, but there wasn't 10 Jewish men to form a synagogue in Philippi. So Paul went down by the riverside where prayer was one to be made. And there were women there uh, who had gathered Paul began to speak to them and uh, one woman, Lydia, a, a very wealthy woman, seller of purple, a businesswoman, uh, she heard Paul and the Bible says that God opened her heart. What a beautiful picture, how the word of God came and, and her heart was opened and she believed the message and uh, she opened her home for the furtherance of the gospel and for the encouragement and of the work of God. We read also of a young girl who was demon-possessed. She was manipulated and controlled by men who were using her. She had the spirit of divination. And whenever she heard Paul and Silas, she followed them and brought confusion because of what she was saying. Paul being grieved in his heart, rebuked the foul spirit. And this young girl was set free from the darkness and demonic oppression and possession. And uh, when the, the people who were gaining from her uh, saw that the hopes of their game were gone, uh, they, they caused a riot and Paul and Silas were, were beaten. Uh, and uh, uh, they were... Uh, put into the prison and the, the jailer, having received such a charge to keep them safely, thrust them into the inner prison and clamped their feet in the stocks. And in the darkness of that night, Paul and Silas were uh, praying and singing uh, praises unto God. And the prisoners, the Bible says, heard them. And at mid midnight there was an earthquake and the very foundations of the prison were shaken. And that all the doors were open and all the chains, every man's bonds were loosed. And the, the prisoner, the jailer, awakened out of sleep and thought that all of the prisoners had fled. And he thought, well, uh, my, my life is, is, is no longer worth living. And he drew out a sword and was going to take his own life. And Paul cried with a loud voice, do thyself no harm for we're all here. The people hadn't fled, but they had come right into that inner prison where Paul and Silas were. And this man came and convinced of his great spiritual need, said, what must I do to be saved? That's a tremendous question. And we need to be able to give an answer to those who are seeking to find the way of salvation. And Paul pointed them to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved on thy house. And so and the Philippine jailer was transformed. His life was changed by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. And he was baptized 
And uh, so uh, Paul uh, again was, was told to leave the city after this event. And he went to Thessalonica and again for a short period of time he ministered there. And there were those in Thessalonica who believed and a church was formed. But then again, opposition. When God was working, there, there, there was those who did not believe and they stirred up the people and Paul uh, had to leave. And he went to Berea. Berea was uh, just again another 37 miles away. And he went to Berea and found the people there who were more noble than the Thessalonians. Uh, he, they were people who were uh, searching the scriptures daily to see what uh, Paul was saying was it was it uh, true and then whenever the people of Thessalonica heard that God was uh, working in, in Berea they came and they stirred the people and Paul had to leave and uh, he departed to Athens uh, and it says whenever he was in Athens uh, he was there alone uh, and while he was waiting his spirit was stirred uh, when he saw the, the city wholly given over to idolatry. They had uh, uh, an altar to the unknown God. And then we have that great uh, sermon or message that Paul brought to uh, the people of Athens. And uh, again, uh, he ministered there. And then we come to chapter 18 where it says, And after these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. Now Corinth was about 50 miles from Athens. Athens was the intellectual capital as it were, but Corinth was the commercial centre. There was a population of 200 to 250,000 people. Corinth at this time was already an ancient city, a commercial centre. It had two harbours uh, and uh, it was, uh, in a sense, a rival, uh, according to some of the commentators, uh, with the neighbouring uh, Athens. Corinth was a remarkable city with a reputation for immorality. Uh, there was uh, the, pro uh, the, the, the worship of Aphrodite, and the, uh, a very popular uh, worship, uh, heathen god, and uh, there, was, there was a thousand... Uh, uh, prostitutes who, who were engaged in all kinds of immorality. Uh, it had a reputation that if uh, if you were an immoral person, you were uh, described as a being a Corinthian uh, or acting as the Corinthians in a moral way. And so Paul was coming uh, to this big city, a uh, very commercial city, a very uh, uh, dark, spiritually wicked city, uh, an evil place. And uh, we, we find, as we look at the life of Paul, we see a man with zeal and passion for the souls of men and women. We read in uh, other portions of Scripture where Paul talks about his burden for the people. And when he writes into the church at Rome, he says, My heart's desire and prayer for Israel is that they might be saved. Um, he tells in chapter 9, um, I, I, I have great heaviness in my heart and continual sorrow in my heart for my kinsmen according to the flesh. Uh, that, that I would, to ha would, uh, would have myself accursed from Christ for my brethren. And he longed for the salvation uh, of the people. Uh, he was, had great boldness in his ministry and proclaiming the gospel. He was uh, powerful. And even in those dark times and difficult times of extreme suffering, when Paul's back was torn to pieces uh, and the, the, the beating that he received at Philippi and cast into the prison, into the dark dungeon in the inner prison and his feet locked in the stocks. And the Bible tells us about Paul that he prayed and sang praises unto God. Uh, we see this picture that we have of Paul, this man of passion and, and zeal and courage. And, uh, and yet Paul was no superman. Uh, he, like Elijah in the Old Testament, he was a man subject to like passions as we are. And uh, 
And he tells us, uh, as we find in 1 Corinthians in chapter 2, he says, Brethren, when I came to you, I came not in the excellency of a word or speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I am determined uh, not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Uh, to the Jews, uh, it was a stumbling block. To the Greeks, it was foolishness. And whenever he came, he says, uh, when I was with you, I, I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. So this is, a, uh, this is the same Paul that, that sang praises unto God in the prison. This is the, the Paul that, that stood on Mars Hill and proclaimed the, uh, the creator and the judge of all. And this is the, 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 the man who uh, brought blessing to those in uh, Thessalonica. And uh, uh, he, in this immoral commercial city, he came, uh, as he tells us, in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Now, courage is not the absence of fear, but it is going despite the fear. And so uh, Paul could say later on, uh, whenever they talked about the dangers and the difficulties that he would face, he says, none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, that I might finish my course with joy. Uh, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus uh, uh, to testify to the gospel of his grace. And so we find that Paul was coming despite the fears despite the fact that he was trembling as he came to Philippi or to uh, uh, Corinth. Uh, we know that also uh, not only did he come with, with uh, the fears uh, that he had, maybe the discouragements of all, all that had passed, but he came without any financial support. Uh, he wrote to the, Philippi, uh, the Philippines, uh, and, and he said, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly, how at the last your care for me hath flourished again, uh, wherein you also were careful, but you lacked opportunity. Uh, not that I speak in respect of ones, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am there to be, uh, with to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. In everything, and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, and to be uh, both abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Sometimes people take that verse out of context. Uh, the context here, as Paul is speaking about, is, is whether or not he has financial support or not. Whether, whether there's plenty or whether there's very little. He says, I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. And he says, nevertheless, uh, you have done well that you communicated with my afflictions. And how ye Philippines know also that at the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church gave communicated unto me concerning giving and receiving, but thee only. And for even in Thessalonica, yet once and again, uh, uh, you gave unto my necessities. So we find that here is Paul and the only, the only people that supported him whenever he left Macedonia was the Philippine uh, church. And he tells us in uh, 2 Corinthians and in chapter 11, uh, when I was uh, present with you uh, and wanted, uh, I was chargeable to no man uh, for that which was lacking to me. The brethren that came from Macedonia supplied uh, and in all things I kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so I keep myself. So here we find the Apostle Paul, uh, he, he is uh, he's not being supported financially. He, he, is, he has had to flee uh, and leave and, and depart, and he came from uh, Thess Philippi to uh, Thessalonica to uh, Berea and on to uh, uh, Athens and now into uh, Corinth and then he has no real support. Later on uh, the, the church was able to minister to him and he was very thankful for that. He was also alone apart from uh, Luke that was with him, uh, Timotheus and Silas 
uh, were, were, were not with him. So there he was alone. And yet we find that uh, God was providing for Paul in his ministry. And it tells us in verse 2, And he found a certain Jew named Aquila, uh, born of Pontius, lately uh, come from Italy, and his wife Priscilla, uh, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome, uh, and they came uh, unto them. Uh, so uh, here we find Paul, uh, he, he finds himself without any financial support. He comes with fear and trembling into the city. And God provides these people as helps. Uh, the little saying, a friend in need is friend indeed. And uh, Aquila and Priscilla, they had been expelled. There was uh, trouble in Rome. And uh, the trouble seemed to arise because between those who believed in Jesus Christ and those who didn't believe in the, in the Jew, the Romans just decided to get rid of the Jews because we don't want any trouble here. And they expelled all. And so uh, Aquila and Priscilla, uh, they had to leave uh, Rome and they came to Corinth. And they, they set up business there. And uh, it tells us because he was of the same craft. Whenever you went to the synagogue, not only were the women separated uh, from the men, but the men were separated according to rank. And uh, whatever your trade was, uh, that was the, 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 the people that you sat among. So whenever Paul went to the synagogue, no doubt he met uh, these two uh, that were of the similar trade to himself. Every Jew was taught by uh, his father and the uh, uh, to, to, to have a trade, to be able to work and uh, had this work ethic. And so uh, Paul uh, was a tent maker. He worked with leather and uh, he worked as a tent maker. And so it tells us that whenever Paul came to the city, uh, he came without any financial support. So he found uh, this uh, couple, uh, uh, Aquila and Priscilla, and uh, because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and brought. So he got involved. He got a job, as it were, um, uh, making tents and to support himself. And he talks about that, how he wasn't burdensome to others, uh, but he supported himself by working. And so Paul worked with them. And uh, Paul was able, uh, because he was working, and he went to the Sabbath every Saturday. And he reasoned in the Sabbath, uh, every Sabbath, uh, and uh, persuaded and the Jews and, and the Greeks. Now, uh, there, were, there were Jews in the synagogue, but there were also Greeks. And the Greeks were, were people who had not yet been circumcised and, and embraced all of Judaism, but they were, they were open to uh, the, the, the message. They were sympathetic uh, to the message. And Paul was reasoning out of the scripture. That was Paul's method. Wherever he was, wherever the congregation was, he reasoned out of the scripture. You find later on, whenever he went and stood before uh, King Agrippa, and uh, he challenged him and reasoned with him and uh, sought to persuade him. And he uh, says, uh, King Agrippa, uh, he said, Believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. And Agrippa said unto him, Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day would be both almost and altogether uh, persuaded such as I am, except for these bonds. So Paul's ministry was a ministry of uh, seeking to persuade people. Uh, Agrippa thought, well, you, you're not going to persuade me with such a, uh, you know, a, a, an argument to become a Christian. And we find that Paul was seeking to uh, uh, persuade the people in the synagogue uh, uh, out of the scriptures. Then it tells us that when Paul and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, they, they not only came from Macedonia and encouraged Paul, but they brought financial uh, support uh, from the people there. And it says that Paul uh, was pressed in his spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. We learn from uh, Philippians chapter 4 and 15 and Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 11 and 9, that they brought a gift from the church at Philippi. And, uh, and they brought a report of how the church was doing. And it was a great encouragement to Paul. 
uh, the good account of the steadfastness of the Thessalonian uh, converts uh, was uh, an encouragement to Paul. But again, as Paul had faced in other places, there was opposition from the Jews. And it tells us in verse 6, and when they opposed themselves and blasphemed. Uh, this must have broken Paul's heart as he sought to present Christ to the people and persuade them uh, of the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy uh, that were fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. That, that he was the one who was wounded for our transgressions. He was the one who was bruised for our iniquity. In, in Isaiah chapter 53, Christ was the fulfillment of what the prophets had said. And Christ must needs suffer and rise from the dead. And uh, they blasphemed. They blasphemed. And so it tells us that uh, Paul shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean from henceforth. I go unto the Gentiles. This was a strong statement of, of Paul uh, bringing upon them the, 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 the Jews whenever they uh, were uh, in uh, Samaria. Uh, whenever they were leaving Samaria, they would have shaken their, their, their sandals uh, to, to remove any dust, uh, that, lest they would contaminate uh, Israel uh, and uh, the, 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 their holy land. They, they would have shaken their dust off their feet. And, and uh, you, you find in Nehemiah and Ezekiel uh, where, where this, this shaking of the garments was a, 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 a symbol of, of their rejection. And we find the Lord Jesus in, in the Gospels telling the people, the disciples, as he sent them out, you know, if they don't receive your message, shake the dust from off your feet as a testimony against them. And so Paul is testifying against the Jews that uh, they have rejected the message and the judgment uh, they would have to bear on their own heads because he had been faithful in ministering to them. And so he departed and uh, he departed from thence uh, and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one uh, that worshipped God, uh, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. Uh, here was a, a man with great courage, and uh, he, he, was, he was a man whose heart was due to word God. He was worshipping God. And uh, whenever Paul uh, was leaving the synagogue and rejecting the, the people, he opened his home right next door to the synagogue. That took courage uh, to, to open up his home uh, for the worship of God whenever uh, the, uh, we find that he... Uh, was rejected and so we, we find here that uh, Paul uh, goes next door and, and uh, then God begins to work and it tells us that Crispus, uh, the chief ruler of the synagogue, uh, whenever Paul brought this message and there were those who blasphemed and opposed, uh, not all uh, rejected the message. And Crispus, who was the, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord with all his house. Here is one man, and, and, and he, he brought his family out of the synagogue, even though he was a, a chief uh, ruler of the synagogue. He brought them out of it because he recognized uh, the message that Paul was preaching uh, was the truth as revealed in the Holy Scriptures. And so he, was, uh, uh, he, he believed in the Lord Jesus and uh, many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. So God was working and, and God was uh, moving. And uh, there were those who believed. Uh, now we, we recognize that even though God was working here, uh, there may have been a sense in which Paul was, was still trembling. Uh, maybe he was uh, discouraged in, in a measure. But we find that God comes to him uh, in the midst of the battles that he faced, the discouragement perhaps of the Jews that rejected the gospel. His heart must have been broken as he thought of these people who were blaspheming uh, and rejecting the very message of life and the message of salvation. And so uh, this vision came to Paul. And we find here that uh, the, the Lord revealed to him 
Uh, this encouragement, uh, be not afraid. Now, you don't need to say that to someone who is not, uh, who, who, if, if, if they're not afraid. Uh, but we find here that Paul must have had fear. And uh, maybe he was even thinking of giving up. Uh, the people were blaspheming. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the rejected the message, the foolishness of preaching. And uh, the message from God was, be not afraid, but speak. Speak, that's God's message. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, uh, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, as Paul said to Timothy later on. And, and the responsibility of Paul is not to be paralyzed with fear. That was the message that came to Paul uh, in this situation, in this vast city, uh, where he was seeking to reach out uh, with the message of the gospel to his Jewish brethren, and, and they were rejecting it. And yet God was beginning to work. Uh, he says, speak and hold not thy peace. This is not a time for giving up. It may have been that Paul was uh, was thinking of maybe moving on and thinking, well, you know, the, 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 this is the same as, as happened in other places. They're, they're, they're rejecting. There's going to be trouble. And so we find that the charge that came uh, through this vision to, uh, to Paul in verse 9 and the Lord spake to Paul in the night by a vision, and be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. And dear friend, that's a word for each one of us. Uh, maybe uh, we, we have maybe got discouraged, and there are things in opposition in the work of God, and so uh, we are to not allow ourselves to be hindered by fear. We're to press on and to look up and to go forward and to keep on keeping on in, the, in the, the task of preaching the word of God. If they don't listen, if they don't hear, just keep preaching. Keep doing what God has called you to do. And he says, hold not thy peace. Dear friend, if, we, uh, if the gospel be hid, it be hid from them that are lost. And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach except they be sent? And Paul's task was being reaffirmed and call was being emphasized to Paul. And then we find that the comfort that uh, he, he comes uh, to his heart, for I am with thee, I am with thee. Dear friend, that is great encouragement for all of God's people. Whatever you're going through, whatever hardships you face, whatever fears uh, that, that maybe come to your heart, uh, whatever opposition you face, uh, to recognize that God has called you uh, to live for him and to speak for him and to stand for him. Paul, talking to the Ephesians later on, said, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, uh, that, that God would strengthen them with might by his spirit in the inner man. And Paul is reminded by the Lord, uh, For I am with thee, I am with thee. Uh, best of all, John Wesley said, best of all, God is with us. And dear friend, uh, we, we recognize that that is something that is uh, such an encouragement for the people of God. Moses said, if thy presence go not with us, carry us up, not hence. And he says, uh, my presence shall go with thee. Fear not, I will hold thee by the right hand. Uh, the promises of God are as real to us today. Uh, this is not just for Paul because Paul has recorded it. Uh, uh, Luke, Luke recorded it for us today for our encouragement uh, in, in the work of God. He tells us, be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. Uh, for I am with thee and no man shall set upon thee to hurt thee. M maybe Paul uh, was fearful that, that, that he's going to face the same thing again when opposition rises and whenever the Jews who do not believe uh, reject the message, they will turn on him again and they will take him as they did in Philippi and, and he will have to go through another flogging uh, and, and wherever he will uh, be left wounded uh, and yet God promises him that God will protect him and God will keep his hand upon him. No man uh, shall uh, set upon thee to hurt thee. Uh, we find whenever God brought 
uh, his people out in time past that not even a dog uh, barked against them. And so God can keep you uh, in, in whatever circumstances uh, you're facing. And he tells him here this word of encouragement, for I am with thee. No man, no man shall set upon thee to hurt thee. And then he goes on to tell him, for I have much people in this city. I have much people in this city. Oh, the power of the gospel. Uh, we we recognise uh, that uh, the power of the gospel, uh, that, that uh, the scripture tells us here that, that, that Paul was encouraged by the Lord. Don't be afraid. Don't stop speaking. Present the message because the message is the power of God unto salvation. And we read in chapter uh, 6 of 1 Corinthians, uh, Know ye not uh, that uh, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. And it tells us there, be not deceived. Uh, uh, the, the, neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers, nor infeminate, or abusers of them themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor communists, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall enter and in, inherit the kingdom of God. For such were some of you, but ye are washed, and ye are sanctified, and ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Uh, God said to uh, Paul, I have much people in this city. These, these are people, and, and some of them were idolaters. Some of them were uh, fornicators, adulterers, and feminine abusers of themselves with mankind, thefts, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners. And, and the gospel came to them, and they were washed from their sins by the power of the gospel. Thank God that uh, the vilest offender who truly believes this moment from Jesus a pardon receives. There is power to cleanse the vilest sinner. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth from all sin. And so these people who were uh, vile sinners, uh, they were washed, they were set apart, uh, they were justified just as if they had never sinned through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're listening tonight, and you're still in your sin. The hope of the gospel comes to your heart tonight. There is one who can forgive. There is one who can cleanse from the vileness of sin. The deep-rooted sin that reigns and rules in your heart can be broken by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And in the name of Jesus, you can be saved to the uttermost, lifted out of that horrible pit and out of miry clay and set upon a rock. Christ Jesus. And so uh, Paul could say uh, later on, nevertheless the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. And so uh, we find uh, Paul, instead of running away or, or moving to some other city, he begins a more settled ministry. And for 18 months, uh, he teaches the word of God. And he teaches the word of God and he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. And then we find that whenever the uh, opposition did arise, uh, tells us that Gallio, uh, who uh, was the deputy, uh, the Jews made insurrection uh, with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat. Here it was going to happen all over again. They were going to take Paul. They are going to crush Paul and beat Paul and, and, and bring him to the, before the judgment seat. And he said, this fellow persuadeth uh, the men to worship God contrary to the law. Uh, this was, uh, uh, new religions were, were forbidden uh, by the Romans. And here they were bringing accusations against Paul. And Paul was going to stand up for himself. But God had provided uh, a defender for Paul in a very unlikely place. Uh, God had promised that no man would lay his hand upon him. And here is Gallio. Uh, he said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong uh, or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason would that I should bear with you. But 
It would be a question of words and names uh, and of your law. Uh, look ye to it. I will be no judge on this matter. And he drove them out of the judgment seat. Here is this man that God uh, raised to, to defend Paul. And so we find that God raised up a voice from an unusual source. Uh, the offend when God be for us, who can be against us? And then the Greeks, uh, they took Sosthenes, uh, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him uh, before the judgment seat. And Gallio cared for none of these things. Uh, there was opposition, uh, but God was continuing to work. And when Paul did write uh, the letter to the Corinthians, he said, Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother. And this man that was taken out and beaten and suffered, uh, and he says, unto the church uh, of God, which is in Corinth. God raised up despite the opposition, despite even the fact that perhaps when Paul came, he came trembling, maybe discouraged and uh, feeling alone. And yet God ministered to him and God used him. And thank God uh, we have the promise of God. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. There may be opposition, but we thank God that God is still on the throne and God can help us. And may we know God's blessing and help in these days. We'll leave that uh, there for now. We trust that the Lord will bless his word to our hearts. Can we bow please for a moment as we close? Our Father, we pray that we will be encouraged uh, Father, even as we think of Paul and all of the fears and, uh, Father, the difficulties that he faced, and yet, Lord, you came to him, uh, you brought encouragement to him, uh, you strengthened him for the work, and you used him for your glory. And Lord, you know our weakness. You know the times, dear Father, that we've trembled, uh, Father, have faced opposition or felt alone. And Lord, we thank you, dear Father, that you're the one who is able to encourage and we can encourage ourselves in the Lord. We pray that you'll bless and that, hey, Father, that you will work. And Lord, that as the word of God goes forth, that men and women will believe and be built up and strengthened and hey, know the sanctifying power of God and the glory of God hey, being revealed even in their midst. So, Lord, set your seal upon your word. Encourage and help, we pray, for Jesus' sake. Amen.